Hi, my name is Jack. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Playwright CodeGen Test Recorder. It's a feature built into the Playwright automated testing tool that allows us to record a browser session and generate tests. So you can see I have a browser open here and I can make assertions and record my events. And my actions show up as code in this window. We can use this feature to write end-to-end -end automation tests by recording our browser actions in a low-code environment. Okay, so let's get started and set up a new Playwright project, and then I'll show you how to use the recorder to build a real test. So in a new terminal window, I'm just going to type in npm init Playwright. And this will ask us a few questions. We'll just say yes on all these. And then it will install all the necessary dependencies. Now, in order to start the Playwright recorder and record a test, we can simply type in mpx playwright cogen and then an address of a server or website we want to test. So here I'm going to open up a test application. When I do this, we can see two windows have opened, our code runner and our window that is being recorded. So if we wanted to make a test here, we could say that when we load the application, we want to see a button that says create account. So we can click this little I here, the assert visibility, and then click this create account button. And we can see it's written a test for us saying, expect the page test ID home sign up to be visible. All right, so let's stop our recorder and then we can run these tests to test them. So I'm gonna copy this test we created and I'm gonna open up my project in Visual Code Studio. So in VS Code, I can see my Playwright project. It has a config file, package JSON, some example tests, and a test folder. So here it has an example. We're just going to replace that with the code we generated in our last run. Now, if we want to run this test, we can do so in VS Code using this play button or in the test explorer. So I'm going to hit play here and see what happens. So it's starting Chrome and the test passed. So it was able to load my application and assert that a value was visible. So I just demonstrated for you now how to use the Playwright CodeGen recorder. Okay, so if we wanted to add to this test, we could just type things in here, or we could use the Test Explorer to continue our recording. So if I bring up the Playwright aspect of the Test Explorer extension, which you can find in the marketplace by searching for Playwright. And make sure you have this installed from Microsoft. Then in the testing area, I can see different actions I can perform on my test. So I might want to record at the cursor. So that means we could continue our test to make other assumptions. So record at cursor, and it's starting up the recorder. Now I can see a window is opening. Now we might want to load another aspect of our website. Let's test the login screen. And we can see the code is being inserted into our test there, which is pretty cool. And let's say we want to have a login heading and we want to see email address and we want to see the password form and a sign in button. Okay, and let's hit the record button to stop the recording. Then we can close this window. And if we go back to our test, we can see the new code has been added automatically by Playwright. Okay, so let's try something a little bit more difficult. Let's test the authentication flow of a real application that requires user sign up using an email address and a confirmation multi-factor authentication code to verify the account. So I'm going to close this now. I'm going to delete out this test and we'll record a new test within here. So I'm going to click uh, record at cursor and it's going to open up Playwright for me. Okay, now we have a browser. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up our application and we're going to create a new account. And you can see now that um, the test has recorded our click event, but when we load this uh, sign up form, it asks us for an email address. Now, if we were to provide our own email address, we'd have to then open our email account somehow, get the code and submit the code to validate this user. But we can't do that in an automated test. So we should use instead a disposable email account. So luckily we can use one from MailSlurp, test at mailslurp.com. 
And if we load this interface and then type in our API key, we can access email during an automated test. So I'm going to open up app.mailslip.com and log into my account. And when I do that, I can see an API key in my MailSlip dashboard. So I'm going to copy that and we will just minimize that. And back in the test interface, I'm going to add my API key like that and log in. Okay, so now we are looking at a disposable email account and we can copy this value here and use it for our sign up process. So I'm going to click copy. And I'm just going to open up some notes as well that we can use throughout our testing. So we'll put this here and we will just paste in, that's our email address. But we're gonna automate this later, that's just for our own notes. And now let's go back to our test application. We'll load the sign up page. Now let's paste in our email address and we'll use a password, we'll just use password like that, sign up. Okay, so it's presented us with a confirm screen. So we might want to just make an assertion that uh, the confirm heading is shown. And now we can enter our code and email address. But how do we get this code? Okay, so what we want to do, we'll just copy that value, put that there, and we want to open up our inbox again. So if we go to test.mailslurp.com, load that, we can see our email has arrived. Let's click that. And inside the email, we can see our confirmation code, but we need a way to extract that in a repeatable way. So we're gonna click extract codes here, and I'm gonna type in a regex pattern that will allow us to extract out that code and use it in our next step. So the code is in a pattern that looks like this. So it says is, and then there's a capture group. And if we click submit there, we can see the values have been returned. So I want to copy that value. I'll also just put it in my notes. That's our code. Now we can go back to the confirm screen and we can enter this code and our email address from the notes and click confirm. Voila, now we can log in. So our account has been confirmed and we can log in and our password was just password, click sign in, and we see the dashboard. And finally, we can make an assertion in our test that we can see the it all looks strawberry text. Wonderful, okay, let's stop the recorder. Okay, so this is our test now. So let's go over it line by line and see if we need to fix anything before we run this test and test our application end to end. So we can see that it's loading the test application um, here to begin with. It clicks on sign up and then it loads the test mail slurp interface. So we might want to just um, delete these steps because they're not really necessary. We can start on the test interface. Then you can see here it's clicking the API key and it's filling out our API key. So that looks good. Uh, next it clicks submit and then it copies the email. So we want to get that copied value out of the clipboard and assign it uh, to a variable. And we can do that. So I'm gonna ask Copilot to do that. Get the clipboard value and assign to a variable called email address. Okay, so there's the code it is suggesting. We're gonna accept that. So the email address will be assigned from the clipboard after we click copy email. That's great, okay. So now we want to use that value. Instead of this email that's entered here, we want to use the clipboard value. So we'll say email address. Wonderful. The rest of the steps are it's clicking password um, and it's submitting a value there. It looks like we may have missed filling the actual password. So we'll add that as well. We'll say fill, we'll just put our password. We'll use a variable for this. We can say const password equals test password like that. Okay, click submit. We're making an assertion about the heading. Then we load the test interface and we wait for email zero or the first email. We click the codes tab, the regex input, and then we fill this regex to extract the code. We click submit 
and then it will click the copy field for that code. So again, we want to assign the uh, value in the clipboard to a variable. So if we go to this line here, and we'll say code, great. Then we are loading the application confirm screen. We're filling in the code. We want to replace that with a variable. And we're filling in the email address again. So this one, we want to use email address. Same here for the login screen. And then we submit the password. We want to type in the actual password. So we'll say password. And then we click the submit and we make an assertion that it all looks strawberry. And we also want to add this line here saying context grant permission. So we can add a context like this. And now let's run this thing from the start. So if we say debug test, we can see the test opening. It's opened up the interface, signed up. It's reloaded the interface. It's waiting for an email to arrive. The email has arrived. It extracts the code, enters the code, logs in, and we have a success. So our test is passing now. So I hope that gave you a better idea of how to record tests in Playwright and how to test a real application using disposable email accounts. For more information, please see www.mailsoap.com or check out our YouTube channel. Thanks.